Hey, what's going on guys? In case y'all didn't know, rule number one in avoiding burnout is having lots of whips. If you don't have a whip for every day of the week, then you're just not doing it right. So here, as we're still waiting for my new compressor to come in so we can get back to doing some painting, we're gonna start on another little whip here. This is a very little whip, but we're gonna do three of them at the same time just because it's something that I've been wanting to do. So once again, these are the little Nachin tanks here. I've already done like a review for these in the past. They're just really simple little kits, very cool here. And also very cheap little kits from uh, Kaviko, a little, little company there in Japan that just makes, they've only really made a handful of kits so far, but they've got two different versions of this kit out, basically just in two different colors. And so what I've got over here, I've gone through my boxes of leftover parts, so just leftover parts from all the different kits and everything, so I just throw them all into boxes. I've gone through the boxes and found a bunch of different option parts, and things that I think we could maybe use for doing some kit bashing with these. So we're gonna maybe use some of those, we'll use some photo etch parts, we'll use some detail up parts, and we'll use whatever it takes to make three cool custom little notch in tanks. So that's the goal. And so let me just uh, kind of go through some of the parts that I've pulled out here, maybe see which ones I definitely for sure want to use, and we get a little a bit of an idea now of a setup, how I want to kind of arrange the three different kits, first of all. So the first thing here is a, a cannon from an HG ball set, actually, which you get like a couple of them, so you'll end up probably with some leftovers of these. Then you've ever built the HGUC ball twin set kit. Now this one I think will work really nicely on the top of one. It's, obviously it's very huge, it's kind of like overkill, in terms of just like the size compared to the actual tank itself, but that's what's going to be kind of the charm of it, right, I think. So uh, here on the back, there's this little nub off the back of the head there. I think, I'm thinking I could put this like on the straight on the back like that, but then it can't really come forward very far. It can really only come forward to about there. So I think if we uh, get rid of that little nub on the back there and stick this onto like the back of the head there like that, I think that'll be probably a little bit better. So definitely going to use that. Let's see what else here. Ah uh, yes, this one here. Uh, I think I want to do one as an open hatch. So what we're gonna do here with one of these is I'm gonna have to saw this. I'm gonna have to cut the part around the, kind of this top part of the head, and then I'm gonna make that so that that's opened up. And then inside there, we've got this 100 scale little pilot in the cockpit here. This is just leftover parts again, and uh, the scale of these actually is 100 scale, so it actually does match the scale here for this. I wouldn't be too concerned about it if it didn't anyway, but just uh, in as far as accuracy goes, it does actually match up, so there you go, that'll fit inside there. Now it will, it should fit, there will be some like gaps around there, we'll have to do a little bit of work, uh, scratch building some stuff just in and around there, and we'll see how that works, I think that's going to be maybe one of the more difficult ones obviously because we have to cut all this apart, uh, and it's a very small kind of space that we're going to be working with, but assuming that that works out, that should definitely be pretty cool, so that won't be on the same one that we can use there for the cannon. And then let's see, we got this little bit here which was an extra little beam saber and little beam saber attachment point there which I believe was from the Fumina kit, one of the Fumina kits actually. And so this one I think will just pop right back onto the back of one of these like that here. That should fit just square onto the back and so I'm probably going to put this one on the open hatch kit here so we'll put that over there with that, that'll work for that. Because then the third option, so we got the open hatch version, uh, the cannon version, and then the other version here I think is gonna be Gelgoog themed. And we're gonna make it, because the Gelgoog shoulder armor is gonna be so huge on this, it's gonna be sort of, I guess, re-Gelgoog themed. Now, uh, these here, we'll have to make an attachment. We'll have to scratch build some sort of attachment to get these shoulder armor to actually fit on there. So it'll have the Gelgoog shoulder armor on there. And then it, we've got some other bits here. Uh, once again, for the back of the head, we got this Gelgoog part here that we'll just attach there onto the back of his head. And then, of course, a commander antenna here, which we'll have to put here on the front of his head up there. And so since we're replacing the shoulder armor, we're gonna have this set of shoulder armor uh, that we're not going to be using from this one. So I think we'll go for on the cannon version since it's going to be like sort of got this giant tank cannon on there, sort of like howitzer on there. It would make sense to maybe have some more armor on here too. So I think I can double up the shield just stacking the shield like that and just like gluing them together basically to make an extra longer shield on the cannon version. I think would be pretty cool. And then uh, we're not wasting any parts too. So that's good. Of course, you could always keep these parts to save them for something else or just throw them away if you're really not too attached to them. But so let's see, we've got our three forms there. We've got a few other little like uh, spare parts and bits like this one I think I'll put here either like up under the eyes there. I'll have to cut some bits off of that either there or like up under here, up under the front like that. I think it'd be pretty cool. It's just like a spare part from a bazooka or something. And this one also, I think the spare 
spare part from like the back of a Stark Jacob bazooka, something like that. I think I'll maybe replace that here at the back of the cannon. I uh, just got this little vent there, maybe just replace it with this little part like that. So just got a few of my other little like uh, random parts here that I pulled out that I think will still be able to work for these different ideas here. These little bits, which were little parts of, like, I think these were from the uh, Master Grade Regazi, like leftover parts from that, which will fit nicely on, we'll probably do this one again over here on the open hatch type. It's gonna put like two of these up inside here just to add some detail on the inside of the shield so those will fit like inside the shield and look like sort of they're like grenades or something stored, just anything, so whatever stored up inside the inside of that one. Or actually, why don't we use those, maybe for example, over here with the cannon type, because then I also got these leftover parts here just from some Australia blue frame kit, I believe that was. And maybe we'll use these on the open hatch type because uh, these, once they're cut down a little bit, they don't fit exactly in there right now. But you got some cool detail here with these parts, and once they're cut down to size, they should be able to fit these up. Whoops into this space there for just some cool extra added detail and especially on the one that we're going to have the open hatch i guess this one because it's got the open hatch that can be kind of a little bit more themed towards like a lot of like little fine detail kind of stuff like this as like a kind of overall look for that got a few more different parts like random parts here that i pulled out that i think i could use which uh maybe we'll end up not using some of these that's okay I mean, maybe we'll keep those uh for some other i do have a couple more of these kits so we can maybe make some more custom ones we'll see how these come together first and like i said we've got a bunch of different photo etch option parts and things like that first so i guess we'll first work on focusing just on like the main modifications i'm going to have to do with these because adding the option parts and stuff that's pretty easy enough to just kind of glue those on for the most part wherever they're going to need to go and just because it's going to be the most complicated one, I think, why don't we start with the open hatch first, because that's basically just going to require us now to have to do some serious cutting on the kit first. Now, just to uh, take this apart a little bit, because that's going to be, I think, helpful for us when we're doing mods. Now, the first thing about this is that there's a couple of easy modifications that you can make to make your life a whole lot easier as far as just uh, kind of the basic assembly of this kit. And as you can see by how tough it is to get the front and back half of this kit apart, the first thing is going to be cutting this a little bit. These pegs here are going to cut the tip at a 45 degree angle there, not very much, just need to cut a little bit off of there at an angle and that will make pulling this apart a lot easier as I'm probably going to have to do it a few times. So now those are cut like that, we can put this together and then pulling it apart is going to be, should be easier. Yeah, it's much easier. I could cut more of that as it's got plenty of peg there and it's kind of much more than we really need. For the time being, that'll work. Now let's talk about where we're going to need to cut. So I want this whole top section to come off. So that means we're going to have to cut in around here and up around this part here and here and here and up around here and then across here on the top and then up and around like that and around the top like that so you guys get the idea of just basically the whole outline of this part there like that now the problem is that that is on two halves of the kit so we're gonna have to cut the front part and then the back part this is gonna be a separate piece and then i'll glue that together and here in the corners there basically here in the corner of it, that's where it's going to be on a hinge that this whole part will be lifted up essentially on a hinge around this area here. And actually, since this is where our uh, cockpit is going to go, we can just go ahead and cut out this part here entirely right now because we're certainly not going to be able to use that. So as you can see, this is going to fit up inside this space perfectly fine and we'll, we'll have some space to fill in actually where it doesn't quite fill in the space entirely. So that fits there, no problem. So now we need to get to our cutting tools. Ah, and real quick, uh, the other quick modification that you can make to make your life a whole lot easier too is here with the arms. Now once the body is put together like that, then you've got this, like, for plugging the arm in this little lip here uh, that will not allow you to plug this straight in, so you're meant to put the arm in between the two pieces when you put them together, but if you just cut that part away and just turn this into just a straight peg, then you can put the part in without any problems. So I'm actually just going to use some nippers here at first just to kind of nip that away. There you go, now that's just turned into a straight peg, now that that just pops into there and we don't need to worry about having this all put together. Just it will make it easier for doing your modifications, your assembly and painting and everything like that if you're able to just keep this apart and put together very simply like that. Now for the legs, it's a little bit trickier because they have to fit up kind of inside, up underneath this 
part that goes over the top of the leg like that. And that said, what I think we should be able to do is maybe something a little bit similar here. So first I'm just gonna cut this piece in the center, which is the piece that's supposed to be, again, between the two halves when you put them together, and cut this, leaving a little bit of that lip there on the edge, like basically what we had with the arms. And now with my finer nippers, basically do the same thing, just nipping away this edge around the side of that and actually it might make it a little bit easier to take it off of the leg there. So this is basically just turned into just a kind of a peg with a ball joint at the end of it. And the ball joint is what plugs into the top of the leg there. And basically the whole reason that I left a little bit of a lip here on this is that so that the peg could be a little bit longer. If I would have cut it past the lip, then I think the peg would have been maybe a little bit too short and that might cause us some problems. But now that that is cut away, and we've just got a little bit of a peg left on there. You should be able to pop that up into place like that. There you go. And so once the kit is all painted and everything, I'll probably just glue that anyway, because now as it is, it's a little bit loose in there. I don't think it's going to fall off just because of, like I said, you have this edge, this sort of fender part. I'm not exactly sure how to call that. This part over the top of the leg, which is kind of holding it in place, actually. So it's not going to fall off, but it's definitely a little bit loose. I'll just glue that later on once everything is painted. That won't be a problem. All right, so there we go. So now that he's easily disassemblable, easily disassembled, back to the cutting. Now this gives us a really good opportunity for me to use this new tool here that I recently got. This is made by U-Star, which is like a kind of a Chinese company uh, that is so it's pretty cheap, but you can make, get these made, I think, from other companies. Obviously, I think probably other different companies, I'm sure, make them. It's just kind of an edge scribing tool. Uh, so it's just got a sharp metal point. It's just one big, heavy kind of metal rod here. But it does have a comfortable little grip here on it. And so this, basically, I can run along the edges where I'm going to want to cut, just basically to give me a good starting line that then the saw can follow for uh, doing our actual cutting. So, like for here... And so once the lines are all defined here, I can go in with my little saw blade here. This is from actually a Kotobukiya set of micro saws here. It just attaches into your uh, hobby knife. Here there's other ones that you can use. I do actually have some uh, Hasegawa tri-tool versions as well, which I may use if I need. There's really only a couple of cuts that we can make here. And then for the other, like these inner sort of corner cuts, I think I'm going to have to use like just a scriber. I just scribe, 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 scribe until it cuts all the way through. It's going to take a long time because unfortunately this plastic is a little bit thick. Uh, for how small these parts are, they, they, I mean, it's a little bit thicker than I think probably it would be if it was just a, a simple Bandai part, unfortunately. So it's going to take a little while to just get this all totally cut out, and then the part on the back of the head as well. So we've actually got two parts to cut out. And these saws are pretty delicate, so you just kind of have to take your time with it, and it just kind of takes a little while, unfortunately. Alright, so it took a little while, but... It's and it's also looking a bit rough at the moment. We're definitely gonna need to do some cleanup on this, but that's separated there. And then the top part, once again, we have the front and back half of that, so we'll have to glue those together and kind of remove the seam line a little bit on that. And then that will that can be set up for our open hatch like that. So yeah, we need to go in, do some cleanup on this, get this all cleaned up, and this is where our cockpit is going to go up inside there. You can sort of get an idea of how that's going to look. Something like that it looks pretty good. I think so. All right, let's uh, get this all cleaned up and move on. Okay, so that's much better now. It's looking much cleaner. I actually cut out a little bit here at the front as well. And the top part is glued, but it's not super dry yet. So I'm not really worried about uh, cleaning this up too much more at the moment. It's clean enough for the time being. You can see how that is just uh, fits over that kind of as it did and now the window is gone and I think if I can find some thing that I can use I'll try to fit just I'll try to cut just a square piece of uh, clear plastic to put in there for like a making a new sort of windshield sort of uh, just a clear part there for where the eyes would be. I think possibly I'm not sure exactly about that yet at the moment and I'm also not exactly sure about how I'm going to set in like the sort of piston details or something to have this opened up like that. But as for the cockpit, I think I'm actually gonna be quite lucky in how this is gonna go in there because this will fit into here and it should be somewhere right around there. Now, fortunately, I still have a little bit of this peg here left that was just part of the construction of this kit that I cut off and I probably, 
now wishing that I didn't cut off quite so much of it because I can actually use that. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do very simply is just take a piece of plot plate, just stick it into the back of the chair here, drill a hole through that. So then that will just plug right straight onto that peg. That'll be super easy. So I'll just get my little box of scrap plot plate pieces and found or find a piece looks about right that I can cut a little piece off of. This one almost fits in there already, so that works easy enough. Only need a little bit of this. And for the moment, I think I'll remove the pilot because I am going to need to paint that separately. So just stick this part in here behind the chair. Just clean that up a little bit there at the top. It's surely not going to be noticeable, but just in case. Make sure that that's just clean at the top of that plot plate part and actually fits in there super snugly. That's good. Barely had to cut this at all. Worked out very well. Just throw a little glue in there and then we'll have to give that a little bit of time to dry before I go drilling into this. But just make sure that that's good and glued and then that will be just fine. All right, cool, cool. That works out really well. So because we got uh, glue drying on a couple of parts there, we'll set that to the side for a moment and go over to the shields, fitting these detail parts into the inside of the shield here. Now, as I mentioned before, these like line up and like, will fit in here, I think like just right. I just need to cut a little bit off of here so that they will fit down into place where they should be. So we're going to just cut this apart a little bit here. And then once that is all cut up, you can see that should fit in there just right like that for an extra little bit of detail in there. And I actually think I probably will add like one little tiny bit in there more just to make it look that little bit much nicer. But okay. And then the last point of a kind of major modification we're going to make on this is turning this arm into a gun. So. Basically, this is just going to come off. We're just going to have the arm here. And this, I believe, was leftover parts from the Tristan, which is leftover parts from the Alex HD kit. And so we're just going to attach this onto there in place of the hand and make some adjustments here with this. So first thing we're going to do is uh, we'll have to cut a space basically for this to just fit down right inside of there. That shouldn't be too hard. And then this whole bit here this all we'll have to cut away now for the time being I'm thinking I'm gonna leave these wires there like that kind of that wire detail and I think that should go up like underneath the shield which should look pretty cool or something we'll see how that actually ends up fitting once we get that far if need be I'll just clip off those wires and we'll go from there we'll see how we're see how I'm gonna actually go about doing that but for now I'm going to cut away this part here now I've cut out a bunch of this and I was managing to keep intact the wire detail out the back but actually I had to cut off that part anyway so it all is going to be okay. And I actually am going to use part of the hand, I'm going to use the cover so I'm going to keep the cover I'm just going to get rid of the fingers and that is going to be it. So the fingers are actually molded in together with the top of the hand so I'm going to have to actually just cut this off of here and actually this part on the inside as well there's this kind of raised detail on the inside we're gonna have to cut that off also so we'll just pop these off and so once that is cleaned up gonna go ahead and glue this part onto there and I cut off the peg for attaching the hand onto the arm thinking I wasn't gonna need it and now I actually think I shouldn't have cut that off because I could actually use that now I set it there at an angle so it's slightly, ever so slightly pointing forward as well so the arm is not perfectly straight. I think something like that would be good anyway. As you can see the problem now is that we've got this hollow space on the inside of the arm. Now I could just kind of not really worry about that because it's not really barely going to be seen at all. As you can see once the arm is actually in place on the body you're really not going to be able to see that hollow space in there unless you're looking at it from just the right angle. But I'm going to put something in there to help fill that space and just to help fill out that space inside there because it looks just maybe a little bit goofy as it is. Again I think once it's painted and everything and all of that it's not really going to be all that noticeable but just to make it look nicer I will fill in that detail a little bit later. So we need to give that some glue some time to dry for now. And I think we can switch back to our cockpit here. Now I think I'm ready to go ahead and drill the hole in the back of our plot plate piece on the back of the cockpit. So I'm just going to check right about exactly where that should be. I want this to be right in there somewhere around like that. 
So then just go on to the back here and once again just starting with uh, smaller than what I need is just one millimeter just to get our hole in the center here through the back of this. But looking at that peg there it looks like it's probably more around here. This is the 2.5 which probably is about right. So then let's try our 2.5 and we'll see if it fits on there. All right now the test and Hopefully that size should be right, and it is. It fits on there. It's actually just a little bit loose, it seems like. So I think it's probably gonna be safe to just go ahead and just glue this in right now. If I need, I can rip, just rip it out later. But I'm just gonna stick some glue on this and stick it in there, and I think we'll call it a day for today's work on this. I'm feeling pretty good about how this is coming along how quickly it's coming on. I was expecting this one to be the most challenging just because it was a lot of kind of cutting, like I said, involved with that. And, but yeah, actually it's been, it's come together quite well. I'm quite happy with this. And so for now that gets us off to a good start. This one, like kind of all the most difficult parts, the trickiest parts anyway, are all kind of done now and then in the next part we can work on just finishing this guy up with some other little detail parts and stuff and we will get everything to where it's just about done sort of on this and we'll start working on the next one as well but the other kind of happy accident here that I've noticed is that just in here the gap between this inside and the chair leaves just exactly actually the right amount of gap for this to actually fit on there uh, just right in between there really well it's like just about like a perfect fit and so I think I'll be able to just glue it in there exactly like that now that's not even glued in place I'm just that's just held in place there temporarily like that just by friction so really nice fit on that that's very convenient and so pretty good start to the first one here we will have the next two uh, works in progress uh, for the next two guys and then just finishing up this one yeah coming up pretty soon thank you guys all so much for watching and look forward to working on these some more as always if you guys want to check out usa gundam store these are available and again relatively cheap for these just for a small simple kit like this and pretty fun to work on so check the link to usa gundam store there down below thank you guys for watching see you next time bye bye